from the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, welcome to the 2020 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year Naming Ceremony. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm Sonia Brown, Education Program Director, and I lead the Educator Advancement Section, which is part of the unit known as District and Regional Support. I am delighted, so delighted to be your host today. Now this year, with the support of Equitable Advisors and PBS North Carolina, today's ceremony is being live streamed across the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction's YouTube Facebook, and Twitter platforms. We know this live stream opportunity will allow for school districts to cheer on uh, their regional finalists and allows members of the education community to tune in live and celebrate the accomplishments of these outstanding finalists with us today. Today's ceremony is presented in a fashion that's almost back to normal, and I hope that you will enjoy all that we have planned for you. So, we started the planning process for this special day back in August when these finalists were just competing in their different districts. They made it through that process and came out as winners in their prospective regions. When we first met the regional finalists back in February for their state interviews, we could easily tell they were very close and a very lively group. <laughs> And this type of energy, though, is, is certainly what we need in our classrooms. Our goal today is to not only name North Carolina's 53rd Teacher of the Year, but to also establish another branch in the network of advocacy that happens in North Carolina for teachers and the teaching profession. Seated in front of me are the nine individuals that form the 2020 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year cohort. Individually, they are great, but together they have proven to be superheroes. As teachers, you tend to give us so much knowledge, so much guidance, confidence, stability, and love, and also an access to our dreams. All of you have different gifts that you bring to this profession. You have unique gifts to touch and affect change in children. And believe it or not, they need you. Please give the 2020 North Carolina Teacher of the Year cohort a hand. <laughs> what a wonderful day to be sitting in your seats. We are so proud of you. At this time, I'm delighted to bring up the Director of District and Regional Support in the Office of Educational Equity, Dr. Cynthia Martin, as she would like to formally bring you greetings and welcome you to this ceremony. Dr. Martin. Good afternoon. It is such a pleasure to be with you District and regional support is responsible for several programs and initiatives at the department. Nothing brings us more joy than celebrating our distinguished teachers and principals in the state. We couldn't do this without our reg regional education facilitator team led by Dr. Sonia Brown. The REFs reviewed 135 district charter applications and portfolios. They planned interviews and scheduled site visits to get us to this amazing event today. If the REFs, Jeffrey, Jenna, Rhonda, Tina, Laura, Monica, Carol, and Amy would please stand along with Dr. Brown to be recognized for all that you have put into this event. If you thumb through your program, you will see the names of all the teachers in the state that participated in our process. Narrowing the field from the local 
to district to regional level is a complex task made possible by our state selection committee members. I would like to recognize um, those committee members. Um, three of them could not be with us, but I would like to give them a shout out. Cindy Rigsby, the 2008 North Carolina Teacher of the Year and a national finalist. Mr. Henry Pankey, who is an author and retired principal from Durham Public Schools. And Bill Miller, who is a retired superintendent from Polk County Schools. Um, our fourth member of the State Selection Committee, Mr. Alfred Mays, is here. Alfred, will you stand? <laughs> Alfred is the Director and Chief Strategist for Diversity and STEM Education for our flagship sponsor, the Burroughs Welcome Fund. Thank you, Alfred, for all of your continued support. To our Teacher of the Year finalists, there are many others here today supporting you. I would like to recognize the 2022 North Carolina Virtual Public School teacher, Ms. Angela Haynes. Angela, please stand. <laughs> she is here today with her spouse, Greg. NCVPS teachers or North Carolina certified teachers who deliver high quality online courses to students from across the state, regardless of their zip codes. Welcome and thank you for supporting our regional finalists and we thank NCVPS for being our partner. In addition to the newly named VPS Teacher of the Year, there is a very distinguished group spread throughout our ballroom and they know exactly how our regional finalists feel at this moment. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the past North Carolina Teachers of the Year. First, I would like to ask Mr. Bobby Kavnar to stand. He is our 2016 <laughs> Teacher of the Year. Next, we have our 2017 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Lisa Godwin. Our 2018 Teacher of the Year, everybody knows him as Freebird. <laughs> Our 2019 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Mariah Morris. <laughs> Our 2020 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Maureen Stover. Maureen was also a national finalist for the National Teacher of the Year. The next person I want to recognize truly needs no introduction, and that is our 2021 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Ms. Eugenia Floyd. Ms. Floyd, we thank you for your service and continuing the legacy that has been built in North Carolina advocating for educators. Finally, I would like to thank and welcome all of those who support teachers, the principals, the superintendents, the families, the students, all of you are a part of this day. And so please give a round of applause to every all of those who are here supporting our teachers. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our Vice Chairman of the State Board of Education, Mr. Alan Duncan, who will bring greetings. Good afternoon, welcome. Those who saw the program, I'm a poor man's substitute for our chair, Eric Davis, this afternoon, <laughs> who sends his greetings and wishes he were here. I'm pleased to be here today to honor our 2022 North Carolina Teacher of the Year regional finalists and to announce the 2022 North Carolina Burroughs Welcome Fund Teacher of the Year, who will be named later this afternoon. I must say, this is my favorite part of the program because rightfully, everyone who's a finalist thinks 
They will win and should win. And they're right. They should win, and they are winners. So we are blessed with each and every one of the finalists we have here today and the remarkable work that you do. I know every member of the State Board of Education would agree that it has been our pleasure to work with the 2020 North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Maureen Stover, who was just introduced, as well as the 2021 North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Eugenia Floyd, who's also just been introduced. These two distinguished educators have provided our board with invaluable insights and guidance from their own experience that has helped us to inform our discussions about education policy and practice. They are smart, committed, and talented professionals and represent the highest caliber of North Carolina's teaching professionals. They're thoughtful and they're candid. They don't hold back. They take seriously their responsibility of influencing policy to inform practice, and we listen. We are incredibly fortunate to have them as advisors to the board, as we have with their predecessors, as we will with their successors. The board's vision is for every public school student through access to equitable resources and rigor will graduate ready for post-secondary education and a career as a globally engaged and productive citizen. One of our key goals to achieve that vision focuses squarely on the educational professionals in our classroom. Simply, we know that every student every day must have excellent teachers, teachers who are caring, teachers who are innovative, particularly in these last several years, teachers who are leaders among their colleagues and in their schools, teachers like the nine seated here today. We recognize that this vision will become a reality through the nearly 100,000 plus teachers that we have across North Carolina who work tirelessly and make countless sacrifices, countless sacrifices for the benefit of our students. The nine teachers who we're celebrating today represent the kind of teachers we'd all like for our own children. These nine teachers hold their students to high expectations but make sure their students have the support to reach them. Their students know they care. They take risks to improve teaching and learning. They love learning themselves, which their students can't help but notice. To the finalists, your role models for your students, your peers, and for all of us North Carolinians are inspirational. We know that for our own experiences, as we think back when we were in just to go all the way back to elementary school for a minute, I bet you, like I, can recite all the names of the teachers who influenced you from the earliest of ages and what an impression they made on you. So we know what an outstanding role model you have been. It's true that teachers cannot be raised or praised, or excuse me, recognized or praised enough for the critical role they play in helping shape the future of our communities, our state, and our nation. We truly cannot thank you enough. We cannot praise your professionalism enough. So I say simply, thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you. So while only one educator today will earn the title of the 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund Teacher of the Year, I finish where I start. Please know that the State Board of Education appreciates and applauds all of today's honorees, as well as your colleagues back home who work so hard to give students the knowledge, skills, and confidence to succeed. We are blessed to have you, and we are thankful for each and every one of you. I look forward to watching the rest of the ceremony. It's going to be special. Have a great day. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Thank you, Vice Chair Duncan. And now, if you would turn your attention to the screens, we will watch a very fine video from our governor, Roy Cooper, who's the governor of the state of North Carolina. Hi, everybody. Governor Roy Cooper here. Congratulations to our Regional Teachers of the Year on this well-deserved honor. As the son of a public school teacher and a product of the public schools, I know how much strength, patience, and generosity it takes to be an educator. North Carolina has the best teachers in the country, 
And as Regional Teachers of the Year, your colleagues have recognized you as the best of the best. Day in and day out, you go the extra mile to make sure that your students are safe, healthy, and ready to go out into the world. And over the last few years, you've adapted to multiple challenges and ensured that our students and families have the resources that they need to succeed. A great teacher can change a life. Your work is proof of that. Years from now, you'll have former students tell you how much you've meant to them. With your great work, we build a brighter future for our communities and our workforce. And I want to take a moment to recognize our current Teacher of the Year, Eugenia Floyd. Thank you so much for your outstanding service and the example that you set for teachers across our state. Congratulations again to all of our Regional Teachers of the Year and to our soon-to-be-named 2022 Teacher of the Year. We look forward to working with you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Governor Cooper, for that fine message of inspiration. Our sponsors are tremendous partners who make this day possible. Their support to our program is invaluable, and I would like to recognize them at this time. The Burroughs Welcome Fund, our flagship sponsor, provides the financial support to enable us to hold this event and to recognize the state's top classroom teachers. Go Global North Carolina is committed to empowering North Carolina leaders with the skills, understanding, connections, and knowledge to succeed in a global community, and awards the state winner with an endowment, which includes the opportunity to travel and learn about education abroad. Lenovo is the world's number one provider of educational technology and graciously join us during the interviews back in February, as well as to give each of our regional winners a state-of-the-art mobile device and a few other goodies for their personal and professional use. North Carolina State Athletics are a huge supporter of public education and will be providing our regional finalists with opportunities to be recognized and network with the Wolfpack this year. No Kid Hungry Campaign North Carolina is an initiative of the national nonprofit Share Our Strength program. It was started by Governor Beverly Perdue in 2011 and became a program at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill in 2014. Bojangles Restaurants is committed to its community pillar of literacy. This year, they have donated bow boxes to District Teachers of the Year and they have also awarded financial gifts to our State Teacher of the Year. Equitable Advisors, a financial services company, joined us this year as our newest sponsor. They are financially responsible for, your viewing, for our viewing audience to be able to watch this live stream today. Blow Honda of Winston-Salem is donating a $2,000 token to the North Carolina Teacher of the Year program and they're doing this to support the winner as they travel across the state. And of course, the State Board of Education and the Department of Public Instruction, who also supports our program with financial incentives that includes a one-year ambassadorship for the winner as a North Carolina teacher on loan. Please welcome our sponsors to the podium to introduce themselves and briefly share more about their organization's involvement in the Teacher of the Year program. We will start with Lou Muglia, president of the Barrels Welcome Fund, followed by sponsors as listed in the program. Dr. Muglia. Thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just so honored and grateful to be included in this special North Carolina Teacher of the Year recognition ceremony. It has become a highlight of my time here in North Carolina at the Burroughs Welcome Fund since I got here in January of 2020, a, a very different time and landscape than we had experienced previously. Together with my fellow staff member and chief strategist, Alfred Mays, I want to start with our thanks for all of your efforts. One of the great draws to me for this role as Burroughs Welcome Fund president is the unique and long-established relationship 
of Burroughs Welcome Fund with the education community in the North Carolina public education system. Teachers, principals, superintendents-to-be, and superintendents have been important and essential voices in our mission. Never has their impact on our children, communities, and society been more critical. The innovation and creativity displayed by North Carolina educators during COVID-19 has been extraordinary, I think. Moreover, the commitment to embracing diversity of students, teachers and administrators, including the devastating consequences of pervasive structural racism and inequities have come to the forefront. Burroughs Welcome Fund has prioritized our goal to bring equity and social justice forward, as these remarkable teachers have. I've not only enjoyed the celebration of our wonderful North Carolina teachers, but the opportunity to interact subsequently with three North Carolina of the Teachers of the Year I have been fortunate to be able to recognize, Mariah Morris, Maureen Stover, and Eugenia Floyd. It has really been a joy. They have been tremendous leaders and the chance to interact with all of the Regional Teachers of the Year recipients has been inspiring. Thus, it is with great joy and appreciation we contribute to bestowing this Teacher of the Year, recognizing excellence, resilience, and commitment. North Carolina has exceptional teachers, as we have heard. And this decision for the North Carolina Teachers of the Year is always a difficult one. There are so many worthy recipients, and each Regional Teacher of the Year is already a winner, as we have heard, and a member of the Teacher of the Year network and team, which we look closely, uh, look forward to working closely with and supporting over the next year. We join with everyone here today in celebrating all of these individuals and the exceptional educator that has garnered this distinction. There is no endeavor more important in our society than recognizing these unsung heroes and supporting the efforts and providing the resources to our teachers to educate the next generation of scientists, artists, advocates, scholars, and leaders. Last year, the Burroughs Welcome Fund made over $4.3 million in grant awards to support the North Carolina public education system. Our ongoing award mechanisms include the Promoting Innovations in Science and Math, or PRISM Awards, to support professional development and purchase of equipment and supplies. Our Career Awards for STEM teachers, now renamed CAST, a grant award of $175,000 for over five years. And um, we look forward to doing this on an ongoing basis into the future. Alfred and I are honored to have the relationship with this community that we do. We look forward to working with the 2022 North Carolina Teacher of the Year and the team of finalists as they continue to have a great impact on student outcomes and success. Congratulations to these exceptional teachers that will leave an impactful and lasting legacy for the students of North Carolina. I look forward to the festivities. Thank you and hello everyone. I'm Meredith Henderson. I'm the executive director of Go Global NC. And I would really like to thank the team here at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction for their dedication to creating this exciting ceremony every year, whether it has to be virtual or in person like it is this year. And for inviting Go Global NC to be part of it. And I'd also really like to thank the Burroughs Welcome Fund and our other sponsors for their continued sponsorship of, this, of educational excellence. Our hardworking educators are near and dear to me personally and professionally. And so today I'm here to do one of the things that is my most favorite thing to do all year long, and that is to um, announce that one of these exceptional educators, the one who will be named the North Carolina Teacher of the Year, will receive an award to join Go Global NC's annual Global Teachers Professional Development Program. Go Global NC, as you know, has, as many of you know, has been around um, since 1979, so just over 40 years. And we design and manage several flagship programs that build the capacity of leaders across the state to help North Carolina succeed in a global economy and interdependent world. Our policy leaders, our business and community leaders, and our education leaders. One way that we serve our education leaders is through our Global Teachers Program. It's a program designed specifically to provide professional development to K-12 teachers from across North Carolina through an in-depth learning experience about the history, culture, and environment of other countries. 
This global teacher program includes domestic workshops before and after, a 10 to 14 day program that is an international immersive learning experience abroad. Even if we have to postpone the immersion portion of the program as long as it takes to be safe to travel again. The Global, the, the global Teachers Award is an award that is generously supported by the Carolyn Hunt Endowment. And it will allow our next North Carolina Teacher of the Year to join a network of more than 1,000 North Carolina teachers from all grade levels and all subject areas. Global teachers who have learned to use their new global experiences to ignite an interest in a global engagement and cooperation among their students and their communities. The Carolyn Hunt Teacher Endowment was established in 2000 to honor North Carolina's former First Lady's commitment to education and to building international relationships between North Carolina and the world. Before moving on to the location of the 2023 program, I want to first mention something very important here. These are really uncertain times, but two things are very sure. One is that Go Global NC will always protect and prioritize the health and welfare of our program participants, our communities, and ourselves. While we remain cautiously optimistic that our educators will be able to actually participate in the international immersion portion of their program this summer, we continue to monitor the situation very closely. And second, a global education and understanding diverse cultures, both at home and abroad, has never been more important than it is today. Now, for those of you who have attended the ceremony in the past, you know that I like to play a little game to test your knowledge of the world to announce the country that our next North Carolina Teacher of the Year will travel to and study. But this year, you're simply gonna have to stay tuned. As you might imagine, <laughs> Due to the ever-evolving circumstances we find ourselves in, we are still exploring um, our options for the 2023 program. <laughs> so now you know that you will have an amazing gift of global professional development and a little bit of time to dream about wherever that destination might be. <laughs> but we look forward to working with you. Thank you. afternoon and thank you. That's always a tough one to follow when you are given this amazing gift to travel somewhere. Can everybody hear me okay? Oh, okay, sorry, to travel somewhere so special. Uh, my name is Lisa Marie Farrell and it is my pleasure to be with you here today on behalf of Lenovo to honor and congratulate the North Carolina Teachers of the Year. Lenovo is proud to call North Carolina home for 16 years with our headquarters just a short distance away in Morrisville. Since the Triangle is home to so many of our employees, it is likely that many of you have had one of my colleagues or their children in your classroom. Recently, and earlier Dr. Brown alluded to this, Lenovo had the opportunity to provide personal laptops and technology accessories to the regional teachers of the year. In recognition for their hard work and dedication to their students, we hope they have enjoyed their new computers. Lenovo's vision as a company is to provide smarter technology for all. Technology transforms the way we all live, work, and learn. We've all experienced this exponentially in these last two years. We believe that all students and teachers should have access to the proper technology that they need to help and enhance their learning environments. While we believe technology is indeed an important tool for learning, the role of a teacher cannot be understated. Teachers, like those being honored here today, play a crucial role in shaping the lives of their students not only through the lessons they teach, but through the care and support that they provide every day to every student. Again, I'd like to congratulate you as this year's Teachers of the Year nominees, and I look forward to hearing the name today. Thank you for being difference makers here in North Carolina and beyond. Good afternoon, my name is Brian Samorka and I'm honored to be here representing NC State Athletics in support of the Teacher of the Year nominees here in 2022. Congratulations to each and every one of you for your hard work and dedication that has brought you here today. 
It takes a certain mindset and commitment to be successful here. Values such as trust, accountability, passion, and empathy go into help shaping the next generation of our community. Here at NC State, we believe in these same core values, we are, which are also happen to be the four pillars of our success to help strengthen the PAC. Our mission in athletics is to strengthen the PAC through development of think and do student athletes. And I cannot think of a better group and a better partnership than a group of folks like this who support that mission and live it out day in and day out. For the sixth year in a row, NC State Athletics is privileged to be a sponsor uh, with the Burroughs Welcome Fund Teacher of the Year North Carolina ceremonies. We are thrilled to be a small part of this again here today to help honor all of you nominees. As we plan for the upcoming school year, uh, we're, we're, we will work with uh, to establish our Educator of the Year events throughout our 2022-23 uh, calendar year and throughout the over the next year. We cannot wait to collaborate with this cohort and recognize you and all your achievements as well as highlight all the efforts made by all of your colleagues across the state. Thank you for the opportunity to be here again today. Congratulations to every one of you who's been nominated. Each and every one of you are inc so incredibly deserving to be here today. We look forward to honoring you and celebrating you and all of your achievements. Best of luck as we wrap up this school year and begin planning for what's gonna be an exciting new adventure this fall. Thank you so much. Congratulations again and go Pack. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you, Dr. Brown and your staff for making this such a very special event again. I'm Helen Roberts, Program Manager for No Kid Hungry North Carolina. I'm also a career educator who spent 35 years teaching high school science in Wake County and the proud mom of a high school US history teacher in Henderson County who's well represented here today. On behalf of my colleagues at No Kid Hungry North Carolina, I'm honored and excited to be with you today celebrating the 2022 finalist teacher for Teacher of the Year. A No Kid Hungry campaign was started in North Carolina by Governor Beverly Perdue in 2011 and became an initiative of UNC Chapel Hill in 2014. We work alongside the Department of Public Instruction local school systems, UNC programs such as Carolina Hunger Initiative, and community partners to increase access to federally funded meals for children who need them at school, after school, and during the summer months. So many of our students depend on school meals for their daily nutrition. We have worked in all of the districts mentioned here, I mean, represented here today over the past 11 years. During the past two years, our focus has been on providing tools for families to find sites with meals for kids, promoting innovative, meal, innovative ways to serve those meals during emergency response, and distributing about $2 million in grants to schools and districts and community partners across the state. No one understands any better than teachers that students can't learn unless their basic needs have been met. While we know that parts of our lives are returning to normal, supply chain disruptions, labor challenges, and the ex expiration of, federally, of federal flexibility waivers mean that many school nutrition departments are still facing an emergency situation for the upcoming summer and school year. Nutrition departments are depending more than ever on allies who recognize the connection between school meals, social emotional health, and academic achievement. And these allies need to be outspoken about the importance of school meals with families and local and state leaders. We're asking you to be allies for school nutrition in your schools, your districts, and your regions. Please go to our website, 
No Kid Hungry North Carolina, to see some great examples of the 2021 teacher cohort and others sharing their nutrition stories during our annual no North Carolina Child Hunger Leaders Conference. As a sponsor of the Teacher of the Year program, I'm pleased to announce that No Kid Hungry North Carolina is awarding all nine of the regional winners Amazon gift cards, you find it at your place at the table, for $250 to be spent any way you want. <laughs> Please know that this is our way to say thank you for all you do for the children of our state. On behalf of the staff, donors, and partners of No Kid Hungry North Carolina, congratulations. You are all our heroes. Good afternoon, and congratulations to everyone. My name is Ken Reynolds, and I'm the Director of Corporate and Community Affairs for, for Bojangles. On behalf of our over 10,000 employees, we want to say thank you for everything that you're doing in the classroom. We hope that this past year has been a little easier for you than 2020. Hopefully, we never have to repeat that process again. Before I began my career at Bojangles, I taught business technology full-time for 10 years at a state vocational technical school in Kentucky. We had post-secondary students 11 months out of the year and served our local high school. I always remember people saying, teachers have it made because they only work nine months out of the year. <laughs> well, this always made me just furious. So I would say people do you not realize that teachers never work an eight-hour day? It's always a 10 to 12-hour day. There's prepping to do, testing, grading stacks and stacks of papers. And I mean stacks and stacks when you were a business technology teacher teaching word processing and accounting. Um, and then there was personal development plans and school functions that you had to attend. And during the summer, it's going to school or working a second job to make ends meet. Then when I told them that, they always said, wow, I didn't know that. Of course, it's all worth it because of all the impact we make in people's lives. It still makes me proud when a student that I had 20 years ago thanks me for being so strict on them and teaching them, them to succeed in the world of business. Bojangles is a true believer in the importance of literacy. It's so important to us that we've made it a pillar in our community relations plan. This year, we are proud to partner with the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction for our second year in the row, and we plan to continue this partnership for many years to come. Last year, we provided over 2,700 books to district teachers of the year. This year, we will do the very same thing. You should receive your books the very first week of May. All of us at Bojangles salute you for choosing teaching as a career. You are shaping and molding our future leaders and providing our kids a great education. So continue the great work, and once again, congratulations. It's bow time for teachers. <laughs> Is everyone nervous excited <laughs> turn to my page here um, I want to introduce myself I'm Marty Bullard with equitable advisors and uh, just a fun fact for you history buffs I thought you might like this equitable has been around since 1859 it's kind of nuts right um, <laughs> Lincoln was inaugurated as president 1861 just to give you an idea so I was a middle grade science history major, so I like history, even though I'm a financial advisor now, but I thought that was kind of a fun fact for you. Uh, on behalf of Equitable Advisors and Equitable Foundation, we want to congratulate all of you. You've worked so hard, extremely hard, and have obviously made a tremendous impact just to be here today. 
I search for a quote that would be appropriate for such an esteemed group of educators, and I feel that I found one. The quote's actually by Steve Jobs. And I, I may read it twice. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. I'll read it one more time. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. The most important, most important things have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. I think people know they want to be an educator. Somehow that little kindergartner or that first grader, they know, you know, in their mind, I want to be a teacher one day. Um, all of you, day after day, follow your heart and intuition. Please continue to do so. As an educator, you provide extra love and support to children of all ages daily. Rest assured, these young people will always remember you because of the compassion, the reassurance, and devotion you exhibit. Many of your students will undoubtedly go on to do great things in society. They may become an EMT, a nurse, occupational or speech therapist, a doctor, who may even actually end up working on you or a loved one. It's just something to think about. In my opinion, there's no greater profession than the American educator. God bless you all for the things you do. Thank you. I would like to thank all of our sponsors for being here today. Let's give them another round of applause, please. Sponsors, just know that we really appreciate you. So, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce you to the 2021 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Eugenia Floyd. Now, <laughs> now Eugenia is a fourth grade teacher at Mary Scroggs Elementary in Chapel Hill. And so, <laughs> and soon after her North Carolina announcement, she hit the ground running. And Eugenia has already visited 62 school districts and several charter schools in our state. She has been a keynote speaker at various conferences, facilitated workshops for school districts, participated in several interviews with local, state, and national media outlets and publications. I would like to thank her for expanding the teacher network and for ever expanding the idea of teacher advocacy in North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and help me welcome to the podium our current Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Eugenia Floyd. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown, for that wonderful introduction. I bid you all greetings. I would like to say it has been an honor and a a, just a complete pleasure to be the 2021 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year. I am especially thankful to my sponsors, the Burroughs Welcome Fund, Lenovo, Go Global NC, NC State Athletics, No Kid Hungry NC, Flo Honda, and of course, Bojangles. <laughs> As a literacy teacher, I was especially appreciative of Mr. Reynolds and Bojangles in their in them providing and donating books to the schools of every district teacher of the year in our state. That's 115, and it was a, definitely a fantastic bow box. Thank you so much, Mr. Reynolds, for that special gift for kids. And thank you all for just singling out your appreciation to the teachers of North Carolina Public Schools. We greatly appreciate it. 
I would also like to welcome Equitable to the North Carolina Teacher of the Year sponsor family. Thank you for making sure that so many are able to tune into this very special celebration for the nine fantastic educators that are being honored today. So almost a year ago today, I was thrust into part of the educational world that I thought never really thought about. I knew the kids in my classroom, I knew my fourth grade PLC, I knew my school building, and I knew the community that I served. That was my world. And as I trembled across the stage, I learned quickly that this day, the announcement day, is the award. And that this is the day that we will celebrate being teachers of the year. Myself and pretty much every teacher of the year in this room that they announced earlier today will tell you that being a teacher of the year is not just an award, it is also a position. And whether you are a teacher of the year in a school, a district, a region, or state, or nationally, you are in a position. More than ever, the urgency and opportunity to transform public education in North Carolina is at the hearts and minds of many. And recently, I had an opportunity to hear a wonderful speaker by the name of Goldie Muhammad. She said that transformation doesn't happen without collaboration. And when you are in a position, you acknowledge and value that this work is not done alone. You acknowledge that you don't work in a silo. I have had the honor and pleasure to work with nine educators that span this beautiful state. I get to work with Jen Ackeson of the Northeast, Jenny Bryan of the Southeast, Nicole Rivers in the Sand Hills, Kelly Poquette in the Piedmont Tri-N, Triad, excuse me, Cece Robinson from the Southwest, Aaron Ellington from the Northwest, Susanna Serrato from the West, Jeremy White from the charter schools, and I also get to work with Emily Higdon, the 2021 NCAP Prudential North Carolina Beginning Teacher of the Year. This network, this team, and my new family made a plan to elevate the 1.5 million students of North Carolina public schools by empowering educators. We were determined to make sure that the educators of North Carolina were seen, heard, valued, supported, and most importantly, connected to one another so that the stories of our children can be pushed forward. We have worked hard to be a bridge to connect with every district in our region, sharing information, sharing opportunities, and sharing the concerns and also the celebration of our children because collaboration that stretches the state, uh, collaboration that stretches across the state is the only way to truly transform education. So I would also like to add that it's vital and to be intentional with our collaboration. Having Emily Hid Hidden on the 21 team is and will always be vital to the, excuse me, to the bringing the perspective of the beginning teacher and so much more. But I'm also grateful that NCAT and Prudential continue to acknowledge the great works of beginning teachers across our state. In fact, we are honored today to have the 2022 NCAT Prudential North Carolina Beginning Teacher of the Year present here, Mr. Xavier Adams. As a member of this 2022 Teacher of the Year team, I know that Mr. Adams will bring a great perspective and he will be a dynamic asset to this team. So thank you so much, Mr. Adams, for being here today to recognize these dynamic leaders. While in position, the 2021 team has been a bridge to connect to children and teachers in North Carolina public schools. We have been more than grateful to have quarterly meetings with our flagship sponsors, the Burroughs Welcome Fund. Thank you so much, Dr. Muglia and Mr. Mays, for being in full support of our mission. And with that support, we were even given the opportunity to join the North Carolina Education Policy Fellowship. And just last week, a few of us were in the offices 
of Senator Tillis in Washington, D.C., and speaking with his staffers, as well as staff from the U.S. Department of Education. And I cannot say enough about the public school forum, Tar Heel teachers at home, every district, every charter school, every university, various programs, the State Board of Education, thank you so much, Vice Chair Duncan, for being here, as well as Superintendent Truitt, and the essential staff of the North Carolina Department of Instruction that brought us to the table to share our stories, and they actually listened. Thank you to all of you for your continued support of educators and students. And then there's also one person that has taken this journey with the 2021 team and me since day one. She not only traveled around the state to recognize each of us for, as our regional teachers of the year, but she has supported us every step of the way in every possible way. She has been one of the most important people that I have to thank in this work that I've been doing, besides my mom. Mommy, thank you. <laughs> she is the 2020, 2020 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year and 2021 National Teacher of the Year finalist, Miss Maureen Stover. <laughs> Miss Stover. Ms. Stover has not only been collaborating in the work with myself and my team, but she has truly turned into one of my greatest friends. And I'm grateful to know you, Maureen, and this picture of you and I last year at this time truly sums up the ways that you have empowered me as well as the 2021 team to take our position. So to the 2022 North Carolina Regional Teacher of the Year team, I'm too excited to pay it forward, just like Maureen has done for me. We are in a position to advocate for 1.5 million children in North Carolina public schools and the teachers that serve them. Myself and the 2021 team look forward to the bridges that you will create, and we look forward to supporting you in any way possible. I want to congratulate each of you and always remember that in the world of education, no matter your job title or position, you don't work for anyone else but children. Congratulations to each of you and take your position. Thank you. Thank you, Eugenia. Thank you for your service. Now it's time to introduce to the world our nine finalists and subsequently name the new teacher of the year. Now these amazing teachers represent all of North Carolina in grand style. After, vi after the video presentation of the finalists, Dr. Katherine Edmonds, Deputy Superintendent in the Office of Educational Equity at the Department of Public Instruction, will present to you, our finalists, as they come to the stage to receive their certificates, along with our State Superintendent, Katherine Truitt. Afterwards, Superint uh, Superintendent Truitt will formally announce the winner, Dr. Edmonds.
Originally, I was drawn to education because the educators that were there for me were vital to my success. I could not have grown into the person that I am today without them. There are a lot of students who really need to have that one person at school that is there for them and that stands by them and that is willing to speak up for them even when it's a difficult conversation. I often tell my students that I believe in them and I set really high expectations and goals. And when I set high expectations and goals and they know that somebody believes in them, then they start to believe in themselves as well. Even if they didn't meet their goal, they gave it their best shot. And we often learn the most from the goals that we don't meet. All experiments don't always result in the hypothesis being proven true. The most learning happens whenever we actually make mistakes and we grow from those experiences as a result. So. I think that reflection and having a safe space to be able to make mistakes is vital for all of our students. What drew me to education is very similar to what inspired me to travel. It is the fact that everyone has a story and everyone has a voice and everyone has a perspective. It's so important to learn about their cultures, who they are, what they like, what they dislike. It's important to laugh with them. It's important to take that time so that you can get their buy-in, so that they know that you care about them and they can achieve the outcomes and goals that you've set with respect to who they are as individual learners. That is also key to personalized instruction, being able to see where students are in a given moment and then just go with that. You have your plan, you have your standard, but you see those needs and they're different every single day. Oh, hey, just got it. So by new, just got it. Is that, is getting something new a good feeling? Yes. Yeah. My passion is collaboration with my colleagues um, and collaboration with my students. I have co-teachers in many of my classes and I love partnering with um, mentees. I love to learn. You have to be a lifelong learner when you're a teacher. That's something that is near and dear to my heart. Ask any one of my students, what is the motto of my classroom? They would say, um, the idea of effort, not perfection. So the first thing that I believe about education is a continual process. It's a continual process for the students. They're lifelong learners and that we build on that and our world is not static, it's dynamic, it's always changing. To stay abreast of what's going on and to be uh, the most successful, you have to continue learning. And that's true for us as educators as well. Student voice is at the heart of what we do. We have to understand, right, that that has to be incorporated to what we're doing. The way I would simply describe that is voice and choice. Okay, I'm going to have a monument project. You can do Minecraft. If you're technologically inclined, put it all on the computer. If you're more artistically, you want to be hands-on, whether you want to do clay, you want to do wood, and you have that choice, but go do the research, right? What is your passion about? And come be ready to present and to listen to others who are going to share their passions. You want to sum up my experience? I'm happy to teach it. Hashtag. It's a wonderful life. I am a third generation educator. My grandmother was actually my second grade teacher. And I remember watching her and knowing that she built relationships with all of us. If you came into that classroom, you could not have picked out which student was her grandchild. I'm in a very unique position this year as an intervention specialist. So while I don't have my own class in power school, I get to pull students from throughout my entire building and focus on what they really need to be successful. So this year has afforded me the opportunity to really drill down with the data, look at the students as who they are and what they need, and focus in on that within my classroom. So every single day, I get to promote personalized learning. I get to focus on you know, prerequisite skills and closing gaps and making sure that kids are not just falling further behind within a regular classroom, but they get that level of intervention that will help them meet their grade level standards. It's one thing to know a kid's favorite color or what they like for lunch, and it's another thing to know that you can be their voice about what they can do in the future. So I just really want that to be what we do. I remember I was six years old and I taught my three-year-old brother how to read at six years old. And I thought, this feeling is wonderful. Opening up a whole world to a small child feels amazing. Now, I do not teach small children, but I definitely felt like it was part of my calling in life to be a helper, a professional helper. And that's what drew me to education. Personalized learning is all about not having a one size fits all philosophy of education. Educators, their role is to be a guide. Take their curiosity and expand it and show them things that, that they never knew they could do. As educators, it's our job to prepare kids and the youth of America to 
be functioning adults and be successful. And so it's our job to teach them how to be people. And so it's not just about what you learn in the classroom, the skills and the curriculum, all of that's really important. The more educators recognize that, that we're teaching kids how to become adults and how to become the future leaders, the more serious we take our jobs. I teach all of our students on a rotation schedule. So uh, discovering and learning and growing with my third, fourth, and fifth grade students in our Learn, Serve, Engage classroom is one of the truest joys of my life. Together we are able to design and implement student-led, curriculum-based service learning projects that serve our community while also centering and amplifying their student voices. Our curriculum should boldly value students' backgrounds and enlist them as active um, participants in and advocates for their own education. Powerful teaching is rooted in powerful listening. If we listen and we design the route and we remove the roadblocks or the inequities for our students, then we can really set them up for success in order to achieve the ultimate goal of empowering them as agents of positive change for the future. It also brings some old math words back. So this first sentence says the sum of the ages. What do I need to be thinking about in my brain? Addition. My father went to this high school and so did his sister. I went to this high school and so did my sister. So that makes me uniquely suited that I am truly a member of this community. So personalized learning for math is like living on an island. We are very unique in the way that we can personalize learning because our standards are much more rote than the other subjects. And so my philosophy is to bring excitement back into math. I try to find things that my kids are good at, skills that they can do to make them excited about being successful at math again. And so I have to move through the curriculum at a pretty fast pace, but I try to do so by helping my students find things they can do along the way and reminding them that math isn't about mastering everything. It's about finding something you're good at and getting really good at it. And that skill applies to life too. I had a teacher who I didn't connect with and I went from a kid that loved school um, to a kid that did not like school. So when it came time for me in my junior, senior year of high school to decide what I wanted to do, I decided I wanted to go back and be an elementary school teacher so no kid who was in my classroom felt the way I did that year. When they walk out of my classroom, I want them to feel great about themselves. So I think all learning should be personalized learning. Right, so the first step for me is you have to understand where kids are, how to figure out where they are. And a big piece of that is we want to be data-driven classroom. We all know we have different levels everywhere. So meeting the student where they are is very important. And so that's the first part for me. And then the other piece of it is learning style. No two kids learn the same. So we have to make sure we're giving them all types of different experiences that will allow them to learn how they learn best. Not how we want to teach, but how they learn. I always knew since my first Spanish teacher that I wanted to be a Spanish teacher as well. Um, bringing tons of culture into my classroom, bringing the language into my classroom, making it authentic, creating real communication between students and the outside world, expanding the walls of my classroom beyond just the school and into our community. Um, and it's really such a fulfilling thing to be able to do that with our students each and every day. Well, we're a college preparatory school, so we believe that it's our job to prepare each student to attend a four-year university, if that's their choice. Um, so we really believe in pouring into each student as an individual. Um, and each student loves certain things and hates certain things about their school day. Um, and so as a teacher, I try to collaborate as much as I can with other teachers around the building, which um, gives students a chance to not only learn Spanish, but to connect Spanish with things they might love, like art or science or history. And I think that when you bring in diverse set of interests like that, it's automatically motivating and inspiring to students, encouraging them to continue forward and do their best with Spanish, even if Spanish isn't their brightest spot in the day. I believe that connections are key. If you can get kids to actually participate actively in their education, then they have a connection to it. I believe that stories matter and every single student has a story. I believe in this concept of public education. It is a good that has to be available to all. 
I believe that building relationships with students is about becoming a voice inside of a student's head, letting them know what they are capable of and helping them find a vision for their future. I believe the purpose of education is to guide young people to be the best adults that they can be. I believe that the true aims of education should be to empower all students to become agents of positive change for the future as they see fit. I believe that everyone can find something that they're good at and it's my job every day to instill excitement in my students that they will be able to find the thing that they're good at. I believe that relationships and personal connections are the foundation of education and it's my job to cultivate a classroom environment where these exist at the deepest levels. I believe that education works best for students when the teachers collaborate with each other and with other experts in the field to bring them the most well-rounded, complete education possible. What an amazing cohort of Teachers of the Year for North Carolina. Our students are so lucky to have you as their leaders, in, as their teacher leaders every day in their classrooms. Good afternoon, my name is Katherine Edmonds and I serve as the Deputy State Superintendent in the Office of Educational Equity at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. I am so excited, honored, and humbled to have the opportunity to recognize our Teachers of the Year. Research shows us that teachers are the most important school-related factor influencing student achievement. And we know we see that every day in our classrooms. Sometimes, and many times, we never know the impact that we've made in the lives of a student. I remember my 10th grade algebra teacher. So when Chairman Duncan said, I'm sure each of you can remember a teacher that influenced you. I immediately went to my 10th grade algebra teacher, Katherine Oakley. Because of my interactions with her, I became a high school math teacher so that I could be a Katherine Oakley for all of my students. And so I know you've heard that term game changer. As teachers, you are life changers. So I thank Katherine Oakley for being a life changer for me and I thank each of you for what you do every single day in your classroom to be life changers for your students. So again, I'm honored to, and I'm trying not to use my readers, I'm honored to be here <laughs> with each of you as we celebrate these nine outstanding finalists this year. Our theme of a showcase of excellent educators was certainly demonstrated in the video that was just shared. Clinton, Abby, Brian, Elizabeth, Leah, Ashton, Ashley, Ryan, and Keegan all share a passion for students and a passion for, profession, for the, their profession. Now I would like to welcome our state superintendent, Ms. Catherine Truitt to the stage with me to recognize our finalists. <laughs> Finalist, I'm going to announce you and ask you to come to the stage and accept your certificate and take a photo with the state superintendent. Presenting Clinton Todd, Northeast. Clinton is the Northeast Region Teacher of the Year from J.H. Rose High School in Pitt County Schools. Clinton is accompanied by his spouse, his mother and father, his aunt, and a special friend. In addition, he's also accompanied by his superintendent and his principal. Let's give Clinton another applause. <laughs> and I know each of you are nervous, but we are as well. <laughs> we want to make sure your special day is special. <laughs> yes, 
presenting Abby Nobles, Southeast Region Teacher of the Year. <laughs> Abby is from New Hanover High, High School in New Hanover County. Abby is accompanied by her spouse, her mother and father, her mother-in-law. In addition, she's also accompanied by her superintendent, her principal, and other central office staff. Let's give Abby another round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have Brian Link. Brian is the North Central Region Teacher of the Year from East Chapel Hill High School, Chapel Hill Carborough City Schools. Brian is accompanied by his spouse, his mother and father, his daughter, and a special friend. In addition, he's also accompanied by members of the Central Office staff. Let's give Brian another round of applause. Next, we have Elizabeth Santamore. <laughs> Elizabeth is the Sand Hills Region Teacher of the Year from East Hope Middle, Hope County Schools. Elizabeth is accompanied by her mother, her brother, a special mentor, colleagues, and friends. In addition, she's also accompanied by her school principal. Let's give Elizabeth another round of applause. Now presenting Leah, Leah Carper. <laughs> Leah is the Piedmont Triad Region Teacher of the Year from North Guilford High School, Guilford County Schools. Leah is accompanied by her spouse, her mother, and special friends. In addition, she's also accompanied by her school principal and her former principal and two colleagues. Let's give Leah another round of applause. Presenting Ashton Berry. Ashton is for a Southwest Region Teacher of the Year from W.R. Odell Elementary, Cabarrus County Schools. Ashton is accompanied by her partner, her mother and father, and her sister. In addition, she, she's also accompanied by her principal, her superintendent, and curriculum colleague. Let's give Ashton another round of applause. Presenting Ashley Bandy. <laughs> Ashley is the Northwest Region Teacher of the Year from Newton Conover High, Newton Conover City Schools. Ashley is accompanied by her significant other, her mother and father, and her sister. In addition, she's also accompanied by her superintendent, her assistant superintendent, and her principal. Let's give Ashley another round of applause. <laughs> Presenting Ryan Mitchell. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan is the Western Region Teacher of the Year from Mills River Elementary, Henderson County Public Schools. Ryan is accompanied by his spouse, his mother and father, and a family member. In addition, he is also accompanied by his superintendent, his principal, and former principal. Let's give Ryan another round of applause. <laughs> Presenting Keegan Stores. <laughs> Keegan is at the Charter Schools Teacher of the Year from Roxborough Community School, located in Roxborough, North Carolina. 
Keegan is accompanied by his fiance, his mother and father, his brother, and a coworker. In addition, he's also accompanied by his principal. Let's give Keegan another round of applause. Now, would all the finalists please stand so we can give all of you a final round of applause. the moment you have all been waiting for, the state superintendent, Catherine Truitt, will present to you the 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year. We will turn it over to Superintendent Truitt. Well, good afternoon to you all. Thank you for that kind applause. Um, unfortunately, you're going to have to listen to me for a few minutes before we get to the <laughs> announcement. <laughs> Special point of privilege here. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of our sponsors. We could not do this event in this grand way without you. So thank you so much. And what a group. I mean, I, I just am, I got to see a little taste of you when y'all came to DPI a couple weeks ago. Um, Xavier, same for you. You're just an incredible, incredible young man. And I was watching those videos thinking, I cannot wait to work with all of you. You, you guys are, are just astounding. Um, and I know that, that uh, Julie Pittman's got some good things planned, and we're all going to make beautiful music together. So thank you all so much for, um, for your dedication, and you're all a credit to your profession. And I, I, I can't let an opportunity to go by without recognizing um, my fellow teammates at the Department of Public Instruction. If you are a um, part of the Department of Public Instruction, could you stand, please? I see you all back there. Come on. Yeah. And I'm really excited to tell the teachers in this room that we now have a dedicated person whose sole job will be working on teacher recruitment and retention. Um, I hired a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Jason Caldwell. Could you stand, please? <laughs> Jason is now the director of Teach NC and Strategic Recruiter and Retention Partnerships. So I'm so thankful that he has joined the team at DPI to um, make sure that we are filling that pipeline and keeping our teachers in the classroom. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I was here last year and uh, we were all really excited to be together because the year before the event had been outside um, and it was really late, and I believe it was hot, and it was July <laughs> in, in North Carolina when we had the event. Um, but I shared this sentiment last year, and it still holds true today. It is truly life-giving to be back in a room together and surrounded by some of North Carolina's very best educators. At a yearly event like this, the standard remark is often something like, wow, time sure has flown by. But somehow I have a feeling that's not how you feel. <laughs> it's not been a quick school year. It's been a difficult school year. However, I do believe that our best days are ahead of us. And I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the journey that you all have been on over the past two years to get to this point. This time last year, many of you had just begun seeing your students again. Many of you were just stepping foot back in classrooms after flipping that switch overnight and delivering a mix of in-person and virtual learning experiences with no roadmap. Many of you were just experiencing the joy of getting to meet your students face-to-face 
and see them in person. And no matter where each of you were on your journey as an educator, you were on the front lines of the pandemic in a way that very few were. And I include myself in that group. I was not a classroom teacher during the pandemic. And so I can't know what it was like to flip that switch. But like you, my journey as an educator has not been an easy one. As a military spouse, I had to continually adapt and change as we moved from place to place, including overseas. And as we all know, change is hard. If you'll allow me, I'd like to share just a little part of my early journey with you. After graduating with a BA in English in 1994, I married my naval officer husband and we moved to Charleston, South Carolina where we lived for three short months. Then to Groton, Connecticut where we lived for three short months. Both of those states at the time were places where you could not even substitute teach without a teaching license. So I worked other jobs. Knowing that we would soon be stationed in Washington State for three years, and that's what this, this map is, by the way. You can see the Canadian border up there. I had applied to the University of Washington's Master's in Education program. We arrived in Seattle in 1995, and one week later, my husband went out to sea on his submarine where I would not see or hear from him for three months. We didn't even have a place to live yet. And then a week later, I started my master's program. So if you can kind of, if I could allow you to get your, your bearings here, you can see that that area is so much water. And so um, the submarine base is actually located on the peninsula in the state of Washington across the water from where Seattle sits on the mainland. And there's an island in between those two places called Bainbridge Island, and that is where we rented a little house for $650 a month. Um, so he, the, the, the peninsula was connected uh, to the island by a bridge, so my husband would drive about 40 minutes to get to the base, and I would take the ferry to the University of Washington. Now, the ferry at that time was $7.90 each way, which was a, a lot, $15 round trip was a lot of money in 1995. The ferry ride was 35 minutes, um, and so I would drive my car to a little parking lot, get on a shuttle bus, walk onto the ferry, uh, the ferry ride was 35 minutes, then I would walk to a bus stop, and then I would take the bus to the campus, and then I would walk to class. So this commute was about two hours each way. But then when it came time to do my student teaching, that was a whole other story. I would not be able to take the bus to, a city bus to my assigned school, so I was going to have to pay to take my car on the ferry, which means that you have to get there in time to make sure that you get on the ferry to get you by your school by 7 a.m. So that meant that my commute was between two and a half to three hours each way. But then something very unusual happened. An aircraft carrier that had been stationed at another base was moved to yet a third base in that area, thereby changing the entire commute for the three to 5,000 people who worked on that aircraft carrier. This completely disrupted the flow of ferry traffic on Monday mornings and Friday afternoons, making my commute four hours each way on those days. And let me tell you, I really wanted to quit. It was really, really, really hard. And I'm sure you're all familiar with the expression, oh, you can do anything for X amount of time, right? You, I, can do the, I can do anything for three days, or I can do anything for three months. Well, every day I said to myself, I, I can do anything for three months. And now that I'm older, three months is not a long time. <laughs> it, it seemed like it back then, but it's really not. And I know that all of you who just came up here to accept that award had to say to yourself, 
I can do anything for X amount of time. But you know what? We didn't know what X amount of time was going to be. That was the worst part of the pandemic, was the uncertainty. We didn't know how long schools would be closed. We didn't know how long we would be in masks. We didn't know how long we would vacillate between in-person and remote learning. But because teachers are professionals who constantly look to refine their practice and improve their abilities, education was one of the fastest of any professions nationwide to adapt to the demanding circumstances of COVID-19 in order to continue teaching and serving students. It is remarkable what you all were able to do for our teachers during that time. Hindsight is always 2020, but we have seen a few positive takeaways resulting from the pandemic. I do believe that COVID has spurred a desire to rethink the traditional education model that has otherwise remained largely unchanged for decades. This new appetite for change has allowed us to embark on some long-term strategic planning and jumpstart some overdue conversations. And I can't wait to talk with you all about what that might look like. My teacher advisor, Julie Pittman, who's here with us today, whom you all have already met, has been engaging educators in what she calls teacher talks for over a year. And these teacher talks are roundtable discussions that are an open forum for a small group of teachers to have honest dialogue. The words she continues to hear in these honest and thoughtful conversations is the word essential. After months of parents sitting at the kitchen table with their students, there was a revelation of how essential teachers are to our students and our society. As teachers, you are all essential to your students' learning and growth. Pandemic or not, each of you in this room continued to offer personalized learning. I heard it every time in your, in your videos. That was the theme. To every student every day to meet their needs. As educators, you determine every day what individual students need to succeed, and you adjust your pedagogy or lesson plans to assure, ensure that you're meeting students where they are. As we continue to recover from the pandemic, we know that teachers will continue to play an essential role in helping accelerate students' learning as we strive to support districts and make advancements in recovery. You are essential to your students' well-being. You provide students a safe and caring learning environment that enables them to feel supported. Your daily encouragement and support boosts students' self-esteem and confidence. Your daily interactions help build their character and increase their motivation. You give your students your utmost. You give them your focus. You give them your attention. You teach our students the skills they need to thrive. You help them manage stress, develop positive relationships, and work through conflict. You are essential role models on their journey to becoming better students and better people. You are essential to our society. You are presented with a new opportunity to make a lasting impression on students every day. Each day you stand in front of your classroom and you inspire the next generation of leaders and innovators. You're cultivating curiosity while instilling core values like kindness, patience, and teamwork. You are dedicated and caring professionals who help students hone their passions so they can pursue their dreams. I have long been a believer that every student in North Carolina deserves a highly qualified, excellent teacher in every classroom. That is our North Star at the Department of Public Instruction. As 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund Teacher of the Year finalists, each of you exceeds that expectation. Your students, schools, and communities are very fortunate to have you. And my prayer for you is that you no longer need to ask yourself, how long can I do this? But rather that you feel a sense of renewal and hope for what's possible for all students. Before we transition into the announcement, I want to take a moment and recognize Eugenia Floyd. 
She has served as a fourth grade teacher at Mary Scroggs Elementary School. Um, and she has been a little bundle of might since she stepped across this stage a year ago. And your reputation as an impactful educator is going to follow you the rest of your days. Thank you so much for your service to our state this year. Thank you all for being the best that the state has to offer. And thank you for being teachers. Now, let's transition to what we've all been waiting for. Are you ready for the clues? Because that's how this works. I'm going to give you some clues. <laughs> this year's North Carolina Teacher of the Year takes a humanistic approach to teaching and believes in building a classroom community that is supportive of student diversity. This teacher believes it is important for students to see teachers actively engaged in several outside learning projects and sharing them in the classroom. This teacher believes that students need space and permission to explore ideas that are new to them. This teacher emphasizes student engagement in their classroom as one of the highest priorities whether teaching face-to-face -face or virtually, and takes cues from students about what they need and tailors the approach to what best works for them. Our next North Carolina Teacher of the Year platform will highlight the importance of guiding teachers to use their curriculum as a tool to teach students life skills, as well as guiding them on the importance of using different levels of technology, which can show students different ways to learn and grow to increase academic achievement in the classroom. Please join me in congratulating the 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Leah Carper, an English teacher from Northern Guilford High School in Guilford County Schools. Welcome Fund and for all of our generous sponsors, um, Equitable, Bojangles, No Get Hungry, NCSA, Go Pack, uh, PBS, anyone who invests in North Carolina's public schools. Thank you. I would like to personally thank my principal, Dr. Janice McKenzie, and all of my past principals who believed in my vision for my classroom, and they trust that everything I'm doing in my little pink classroom is for the benefit of my students academically, socially, and emotionally. Thank you. I'm so grateful to my incredibly talented, IQ, this is happening, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> to my incredibly talented and hardworking team, we are a crew of collaborators, and I'm so grateful for the people in my building who listen to my ridiculous ideas and even sometimes go with them, if, even if that means like wearing costumes or changing their English classrooms into an art studio for a few days. They're like, let's do it, because they know that what we're doing for students is, is, is important. Um, there needs to be an award for this next group of people that we all would like to thank. Um, there really should be. Okay, so anybody who is married to a teacher, or the parent of a teacher, or best friends with a teacher, or the children of a teacher, or dating a teacher, you're really good people, okay? <laughs> Your teacher love is like, you know what would be really fun to do this Friday night? Laminating things. <laughs> and you're like, let's do it! 
You cut out our stuff. You fix our broken books. You have an entire space in your garage full of our old teaching materials because I might teach that book again one day, right? Thank you for supporting teachers. Thank you for loving the teachers in your life. Anybody who loves a teacher, you are awesome. We see you. Thank you for supporting public educators. So personally, to my parents, to my friends, to my lovely husband, Philip, to my children, Emma, Allie, Charlie, thank you for recognizing that teaching is part of who I am. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for sharing me. Thank you for encouraging me. And thank you for just loving me. I love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> My students inspire me daily. I thank them so much for accepting me as who I am and letting me try ridiculous things with you. Um, I have, I guess, all teachers would agree that we all believe like once you've been in our class, you're always in our class, you know, you're always our kids. And so to the hundreds and hundreds of students throughout North Carolina that I've had the privilege of teaching, thank you. You are always my student. I will always love you and I'm always rooting for you. I was born in North Carolina and I was mostly public, you know, educated in the public school systems of North Carolina. Um, I remember in kindergarten, I counted on an abacus for the people who don't know what that is. <laughs> I am older than I look. Um, <laughs> I remember in fourth grade, Miss Gramley explained long division to me, and I was like, this is really cool. I remember in 11th grade, Mr. Loggins explained of mice and men so beautifully that I learned the power of words. I know that I gained so many skills and learned so many facts as a public school student in North Carolina. I bet you I even did a quadratic equation. I believe it happened, OK? I, it did. I am so grateful for learning those skills. I use them daily. But there are other skills that I learned as a North Carolina public school student that I also use daily. Mr. Riggs, my secondary music educator, taught me to be accepting of new people and, he, and to give them a chance. And he was a really great example of patience and passion. Miss C, my fifth grade teacher, taught me organization skills. Ms. Vaughn, my elementary music teacher, taught me to appreciate voices, perspectives, and music from many different cultures and countries. Mr. Collett taught my speech class in high school, and I remember him teaching me the power of a story, but also the power of just listening. My third grade teacher bought me shoelaces one day because she saw that I didn't have any, and that my shoes were falling off when I was playing outside. She taught me to seek out ways to help people and to give to them when you can. Throughout my K-12 journey in North Carolina, public school educators taught me responsibility, flexibility, resilience, collaboration, forgiveness, hard work, and kindness. None of these aptitudes that I learned could have been quantified or measured on a state test, but they have stood the test of time and have helped me through some of my life's most major tests. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. So this means our students, they're not just students of our curriculum, they're students of humanity. And they're learning how to be good people. And they're learning that in our classrooms every day. If we teach them how to be understanding, forgiving, hardworking, attentive, focused, honest, open, we can teach them how to positively function as adults in our society, the society that we want to create. The purpose of education is to prepare students for their futures, and I know everyone has a diverse future, but every single one of them will be adults trying to function in our society. And so it's our responsibility to teach them character education. So my hope is that we can incorporate more character education into our classrooms and our daily lessons. I am so grateful to be part of this dynamic, talented, wise team of North Carolina educators. Clint, Abby, Bryan, Elizabeth, Ashton, Ryan, Ashley, and Keegan, you are incredible educators. And I am so excited to work with you, to advocate with you for the needs of the over 1.5 million public school students in North Carolina, as well as advocate for the needs and concerns of the over 100,000 educators who work for our great state. It's our vision and hope to help the North Carolina public school system to continue to improve so we can equip students with the skills they need to have a bright future. Our children deserve it. I know I speak for all of our 
North 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund, State of North Carolina Teachers of the Year team, yes. When I say we are so grateful for this opportunity and for this recognition, thank you so much. incredible event and celebration. Congratulations, Leah Copper. We look forward to supporting you during your year representing North Carolina teachers. It has been my honor to host and organize this year's North Carolina Teacher of the Year ceremony. The success of today was made possible by many dedicated individuals. Thanks to the families and support systems for all of our finalists. The adventure for the 2022 Te Teacher, of the U Teacher of the Year cohort is just beginning. Many thanks to the regional education facilitator, Tina Starr, the project lead. Uh, Tina, please stand. Tina was my right-hand person throughout it all, so I thank you very much. And thank you all for the many hours of planning to make this day special for our, our finalists, and that's going special to our recognition committee. Where's our recognition committee? Um, Vanessa, Carmen, all of you all back there in that corner, you know who you are. <laughs> To the district and regional support uh, division, communications, graphics, office of charter schools, child nutrition, and the DPI leadership. Thank you for your role in making this day a success. Finalists, all of our finalists, please take your keepsake flowers with you and meet outside on the terrace for post-event pictures. Everyone else, please enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.